Hey everyone and welcome to What If Disney World. I'm Stevie. And I'm Amy. And today we'll be reviewing our recent lunch at Yak and Yeti in Disney World's Animal Kingdom Park. Located in the Asia area of Animal Kingdom Park, Yak and Yeti offers Pan-Asian cuisine for lunch and dinner. There is a Yak and Yeti local foods market that's a quick service location, but today we're reviewing our lunch on the restaurant side, which does encourage a reservation, which you can make through the My Disney Experience app or website. Or, pro tip, Yak and Yeti is owned by the Landry's Restaurant Group, so if you're having a hard time snagging a reservation through Disney, you can purchase a Landry's Select membership. The cost is $25 to become a member, but then you get $25 off of your first meal there, so it's essentially free if you remember to ask for the discount. But what this membership allows you to do is you can call the restaurant directly and they save tables for Landry's select members so they can make you a reservation even if you can't find one on the Disney website or app. Or you can use the card to get preferential seating as a walk-up. And this membership also works at T-Rex and Rainforest Cafe restaurants on Disney property too. As far as the atmosphere goes of this restaurant, I thought it was really neat. It's very well themed and it really does fit well with the theming of the Asia area and animal kingdom. And I was pleased because we had a large party of nine people as a couple of friends joined us. Hi, Tracy, Leandra, Elijah, and Dominic. It was fun to eat with you. And because it was such a large party, we had to split our reservation into two different reservations. But when we got there, I asked to be seated all together and they accommodated, which was super nice. So when deciding what to get here, I had heard a lot of hype over some of the dishes and I really wanted to try the ahi tuna nachos, but I didn't want to get those and a full entree. So I ordered the tuna nachos and the Korean fried chicken and kind of shared those with the table and ate from both of those as my meal. The ahi tuna nachos were good. The tuna and the toppings were served on a base of really nice crispy wonton chips and the sauce was really tasty. The tuna is raw and it's pretty big pieces. I thought it was all over good, but I didn't feel like it quite lived up to the hype. Like, I don't think I would order this again if I went there. It wasn't bad by any means. It was good. I enjoyed it, but I'm not craving it to go back and get it again. The Korean fried chicken was very good, very tender chicken, very crispy breading. It was really perfectly cooked, I thought, but it was pretty moderately spicy. So if you don't love heat, be aware that this really did have some heat to it, but it was tasty. I enjoyed it. And I ordered the chicken lo mein. So the noodles were cooked well and had a good flavor and the soy sauce wasn't too overwhelming. But the chicken was just okay. It was battered, but not crispy. The vegetables were tender and good. I was overall happy with this dish. And our non-picky kid got the kid's fish. For context, she loves fish, but this unfortunately was just really not good. It was very dry and kind of overbaked, and it was super fishy tasting. I tasted it to confirm, and it absolutely was just kind of not even edible. So she ended up eating off of all of our plates combined. Our picky eaters shared a kid's mac and cheese, which was like craft mac and cheese, very basic. But I did like that it came with grapes and yogurt, but these were pre-packaged um, like a go and it felt very basic, which is fine for a kid's meal. I'll mention briefly that one of our friends got the Malaysian seafood curry and really enjoyed that. I felt overall the food was reasonably priced for a restaurant in a Disney theme park. It ended up being cheaper than any of our other meals on that trip. 
But the biggest problem to me was that it took nearly an hour to even get our food. And then we had to wait a long time from then to check out. So in total, we ended up spending like two hours on this meal. Yikes. That's a lot of precious part time for a meal without characters. We might have just had an off day with low staffing, but for that reason and the reason we really didn't love our food, I don't really foresee us going back here. There's so many great quick service options at Animal Kingdom. I think in the future we'll just opt for Nomad Lounge or Satuli Canteen or Flame Tree Barbecue because we enjoy those more than we enjoyed this and they don't take up as much park time. Maybe we'll try the Yak and Yeti quick service one day though too. Okay, so there you have our review. Have you ever been to Yak and Yeti? What was your experience like? Please let us know in the comments. And hit that like and subscribe button. And until next time, keep dreaming.